Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, uh, as we've been doing here on Sundays, this new thing we're trying out, uh, we're doing fan speak, comics we like. And uh, we're going to continue with yeah. that. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, We're excited. Uh, we're excited, and uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the things we really like. Because, you know, we do talk about things that are, you know, we, we joke about them, to be fair. But we do talk about some negative things quite a bit all th- throughout the week. Because, crappy oh, things. just negative <laughs> gross things yeah things that make you feel icky inside that then we remember we're a comics channel that's right that's so, right so this is this show is kind of about cleansing it's a sunday show where we're uh where we're taking the soap to the dirty areas and uh we're just talking about the things we're just enjoying reading in the, in comic books. the scrub scrub you're right man. scrub my dirtiness scrub that dirtiness right. i see liam is over here how yeah. you doing liam nice to see you man uh, finally, it showed up in my feed. Sweet, dude, because uh, we know how YouTube is about uh, having things pop up and notification on time. But uh, we're certainly glad That's... to have you. As a matter of fact, Liam, I'm terrified about power. Yeah, they are. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but yeah, Liam, I might, I might um... throw one, one of the bigger stuff. Oh well, you know. Uh, but uh, Liam, I do believe you are in the fan speak uh, Facebook, dude. You can go grab that link if you'd like and come over here, man. We haven't talked to you in quite a while. Uh, Eric is here. Hello, Eric. He says, hello, party people. Where's my loofah? Yeah, no, we need a loofah. That's right. We're loofahing it up What's tonight. A it's uh, something that's Is that square. an old person thing? No, it's a spongy thing that women use to scrub themselves. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, it's marsupial Gamer is in here. says, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello there. Um, and uh, I do believe there's something called a Super Bowl happening today. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes. So yes. We, can't be that super. Where where is it? Uh, is it started or it's probably starting soon? Yeah, huh? it's it's already started. It started six thirty. And this uh, is the what? Patriots versus what? The... Super Bowl. You want to see a bunch of buff men hurling balls around and smashing into each other? What are you a nerd? Come over here and watch us talk about comics, idiot. There you go. There you go. And and Booster is is on fire. So it oh, yeah. is the Patriots versus who? I think the Rams. The Rams? Sweet. Well, hopefully they'll have a good game. Uh, we do appreciate you guys coming over here, though. We're going to have some fun. Uh, we do see that Liam says that uh, I saved the woman from a snake earlier today and just got home from taking her to the hospital. But So I am highly muddy, but I'll go have a quick shower and pop in. Sweet, dude. Love to see it. And saving yeah, people Yeah, cleanse yourself. Well, he's one of those Australians. You're such, a, you're such a man. Yeah, he is. Manly, muddy man. Sweet. Um, all right, we got the homeless liberal in here too. I'm here. I hate sports. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so long as they don't smash their balls together. Well, unfortunately, that happens quite a bit. I yeah, actually played yeah, that's football. uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, since I was a little kid, I played all all the way up through high school. Um, I was a linebacker, middle linebacker, actually. You ever play mm, rugby? I was there? always. Oh, I played touch rugby. <laughs> touch rugby? That's that's just a sacrilege. Yeah, so instead of tackling each other, you just, like, tag each other. Tag, you still get hurt. Yeah, but if... Uh, I, I played uh, <laughs> hockey and soccer, and I was always made goalie because I was the little fat kid. Oh, I see. Well, hey, that's Man. where I got my na- nickname, you know. Bugbear, I got that out of uh, playing football. I thought you got that from being a bitch-ass nerd that plays D&D. Oh, actually, it kind of <laughs> came around <laughs> both ways, actually. It was both ways, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was a compliment and a shun at the same time. It was quite beautiful. Um, I, see. The, I see. Yeah. A Marcel Blue Gamer says, two teams I despise with a burning fire of a thousand suns. All right. I guess you don't like uh, the Patriots and the uh, Rams, huh? <laughs> I can't hate a team. <laughs> Eric well, Boyd we'll be says, in Yeah. Uh, Booster said, uh, excuse me, Eric said that Booster played pocket pool. Mm-hmm. Yep. He probably still does, I'd imagine. What's a, you... I I have to actually look up pocket pool. <laughs> I think it's just a colloquialism for masturbation, dude. Ah. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah big time, big time. Anyway, yeah. how you doing there, yeah. Denali? Uh, Booster and I have been having some yucks here. Are you uh, having a good uh, good old evening over, over there on the East Coast? Yeah, I've, I've been <laughs> enjoying myself in this fine weather we're having. Oh, you're having good weather? Yeah, surprisingly. Oh, well. 
I had absolute torrential rainstorms yesterday, and I was driving back from Fukuoka, man. I mean, that's like a near, that I mean, it was a four-hour ride because of the rain, and but it was absolutely cats and dogs, man. Um, and now today, it's just this stunningly beautiful sun, uh, sunny blue sky day. I don't know, weather. Lacrosse is a man's game, especially women's lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Matt, yeah. I had never even heard of lacrosse until I uh, saw like American televisions and movies talking about it. Well, it's coming from we, a Native American game. None actually. of that. Oh, did yeah. You, yeah. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah, it's kind of built out of. Uh, uh, well, then again, they had they had this game. It was kind of like uh, kind of like field hockey, and uh, it's been developed kind of out of that actually. I don't know the full history of lacrosse. Of course, it's got a French name, so uh, maybe it was done by... That's them. a really puttery kind of name, lacrosse. Ugh. Ugh, the French. Okay, the French. Yeah, no, Chacré we... Bleu, lacrosse, eh? Well, croissant. We Damn the French. This is certainly true. And if there's any French uh, viewers here, I do apologize for you being French. Um, I don't. Yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, you deserve it. Let's go ahead and jump into the comics that we want to talk about today. We got a bunch of them too, so we need to get to it. Um, now, I'm going to uncharacteristically go first this uh, week, as I usually kind of wait, but uh, I'm going to go first this you week. You widow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and uh, mine is the one on the left here. It's uh, Mark Wade and uh, Peter Krause's Irredeemable. Now, I understand Mark Wade. Now, all of you guys are screaming, yelling, and throwing potatoes at the, yes, sir. At the screen. How dare you? Yes, sir. You're not allowed to enjoy anything by Mark Wade. I know. I know. Yeah, you had to burn everything in reverse. That's true. Everything with his name on it must be destroyed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How how's uh, your father wants to know, Chester? Uh, did you move to Japan because of the uh, anime uh, hashtag #weeb? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, dude. I moved here because I married a Japanese lady and uh, had children with her, and we decided that it would be nice if they had some of their mother's culture. And boy, am I glad I did because you know what? My kids have never done a drug. They are straight A students. They're both in university, uh, achieving careers or potential careers, uh, etc. Chester, et you can't have children with a body pillow, pillow, pillow. Stop lying to us. Well, okay. Well, you know, there is science involved. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I know when I grew up in America, I did my best to go to school and I went to university and all that kind of stuff, but there were drugs everywhere. I've actually been shot at a few times. Go figure. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. They weren't shooting at me. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but, you know, <clears throat> I've had other things happen. Uh, but here in Japan, of course, you have none of that. It is absolutely peace, peace, peace place. Uh, utopia, in a way. Uh, so uh, it was a smart move. But uh, hashtag weeb. Eh, I guess I'm, I have a bit of weebishness, as Booster has explained yep. the term to me before. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you're, a bit, you're pretty much an ultra weeb. I thank you. And yes, you are uh, best reason ever. You're right, my super gamer. Happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My wife is very happy. Indeed. Anyway, we're talking about oh, Irredeemable my. here. Uh, now, uh, this book uh, is, uh, well, first of all, so I gotta, I'd have to ask uh, to the chat and also to Denali and uh, Booster. Have you guys read this? Uh, nope. Funny enough, no. Okay. Um, well, I because think it's Mark Wade. <clears throat> because it's Mark Wade, and well, probably, yeah. I remember, and I remember that my first experience hearing Mark Wade was me buying Birthright and hearing how awful of a person he was, he and finding out he can be, he is, and I was like, you know what, I don't really want to support a guy who's very verbally abusive to his coworkers, um, yeah, acting like true. a prima dama and supporting his work was it i was in that stage of uh you know i was supporting superman because i superman is one of my favorite characters yeah uh but now i'm kind of like no nah, i'm not going to support anything even if it is superman because superman wouldn't support such a thing as well well probably not that is true uh and how's your father says domo arigato well uh uh Mr. Roboto. Yes. Um, yeah, I rarely say, uh, don't, they rarely say domo arigato, by the way. Most people say arigato or domo or arigato gozaimasu. The full domo, domo. arigato is rare. 
it's Dumb more, more official uh, type things. Anyway, uh, this comic book here, Irredeemable, I, I chose it. Uh, well, well the, I'm reading it because I read quite a bit of it, but I never finished it. So I, I, I uh, this week, uh, like we do every week, we're trying to read new comic books and what we like. We want to come over here and talk about. And I'm trying my best to do that homework. But the problem is, I keep reading stuff and it's absolute crap. So I, I'm not. I'm having a hard time finding new stuff that I like. So I was like, well, I didn't finish that. Let me go read some more of that. Therefore, I can talk about it. So I did. I went and read uh, maybe five more issues of it. And um, uh, the reason I want to talk about this one today is because I think it's a perfect microcosm of Mark Wade. See, the thing with Mark Wade, as Danelli has said, and many of you guys already know, um, he can be a very troublesome, loud uh, tantrum thrower. I mean, that's what Mark does, right? We know this is as well, well established. And, and um, that's an understatement. Oh, yeah. it is, yes, it is. It is. But uh, the thing when we come to Mark Wade's writing, because the thing is, you know, whether you like him or not, he sometimes he's a good writer. Sometimes he's not, though. So I wanted to kind of use this uh, book as, a, as an example of why he's not a good writer sometimes. Yeah, because you think if you're capable, you're capable, right? Well, here's the thing. This book, book is a perfect example of when Mark Wade is writing, just writing a comic book. He's really pretty good at it, right? But here we have several issues in this, uh, this series where Mark Wade wants to teach you some lesson about diversity. Because, you know, uh, the, the mighty, superheroic Mark Wade must come to the rescue of the poor, weak, innocent, uh, useless, Absolutely. inept blacks, lesbians, or Absolutely. whatever. Right? He's, he's got to they, save They them. just can't protect themselves because they they, they, they're, they're pathetic. useless. They're they, pathetic. Yeah, so pathetic. they need the big, broad, white shoulders of, of Mr. Wade to uh, come and uh, save them. That's right. That's And, that, and this mm -hmm. is where he starts to suck. And it's not because he, he's tinging on your uh, sensibilities and therefore you, 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 you yourself are having outrage. No, 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 no. His writing skill actually reduces when he starts talking about those things. It's odd, but true. And if you go and analyze it at all, you'll find this is absolutely correct. Uh, so this series is a perfect example. The good thing is there's very few of those books where he's actually pontificating to you. The rest of it is just simple story that's being told. And it's a fun story. Uh, this story, I'm not going to give it, we'll give it away, but... It kind of falls into that trope we see a lot with, like, you know, Astro City and several other attempts where they'll take and they'll create this story and they try to turn things on the head, but they're making this constant wink, 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 you know, nod of the head to, oh, this one character is representing Superman or this one's representing Batman or what have you. You see it done all the time, right? They can't, they can't get away from it and just do their own original story. They have to play on these tropes and uh, these characters and, and try to build a story yeah. off of it. Uh, well, this is doing the same exact thing. Exactly the same thing, but it has a very interesting twist, which you have to read to pretty deep into to find. Uh, but um, it, it, I like this book. I like this series. I think it's a clever. Um, uh, you know, we can, uh, you've heard me and uh, Denali and others complain when they take Superman and twist him, like with Injustice or this new movie. It's that's very common. Out. Yeah, it is super common. It's, it's, it's very common to be like, ooh, what if Superman was the bad man? It's like, right. you're, not, yeah. you're not clever at this point. It's been done a hundred times. And in this one, it's it's not Superman, of course, which I like, but it's what if Superman mm. was the homicidal maniac? What if he flipped, mm. something switched in his head, and he decided to murder the world? Which now, is we've seen odd this choice, in... because we know that uh, Mark Wade loves Superman. Yeah, so no, one of his absolute favorite characters. But you, know, well, the twist kind of answers that a little bit, which I'm not going to give away. Uh, but um, uh, but to be honest with you, uh, I have enjoyed this. But a much better version. Well, it's not it's not the same story. But a met, much mm -hmm. better version of if super, if Superman went great went rogue, is actually Miracle Man, which is a British comic, and it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> by uh, um, by Alan Moore, or um, is that Alan Moore? I don't remember who wrote that, but that, I'm not sure. A long time ago, that's a killer. I know. Book. I know uh, Miracle Man. Uh, yeah, it's. I know Alan Moore, Moore did. Uh, yeah. yeah, one of the best Marvel. Miss oh man, I'm sorry. That's a Miracle Marvel, Man that people like. No, I keep I keep thinking uh, Miracle Man, Mister Miracle. It's hey. Uh, they're different. Yeah, they are different. Mister Miracle, of course, is DC. Uh, but uh, that is an amazing book if you haven't read that. But this irredeemable here, um, I say it's worth the read. 
and when you do come across the the nonsense that he when he gets nonsense it's it's quite rare it's a couple of books actually a couple you know issues uh but it's a good example for me because you can see when he starts doing his nonsense standing on his pet on his soapbox as it were um, you can see how poorly his writing goes down. It literally does. I don't know what's going on in his brain. There's some synapses that aren't striking when he's in that mode. Uh, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's when he's drunk he gets like that. I don't know. Uh, not that I'm accusing him of being a drunkard, because I, as far as I know, he doesn't drink hmm. at all. Uh, Which, but, uh, we're just insinuating. It, 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 yeah. It's his creativity. It kind of shuts down. You know, like maybe. how you censor words and everything, and you start becoming dumber. Mm-hmm. It's true. When he's pontif- when he's being that virtual signal, he's becoming an NPC, so you have lack of creativity, so it shuts down. Mm-hmm. He did he do is some- the virtual beam. Yeah, yeah, he did do something really kind of silly in it and, and there's a character, a uh, hero character who is called Kaidan and she's supposed to be a Japanese lady. Um and uh she uses the yude uh, stories of the past, and when she speaks those stories out loud, they become true, and she can use them to fight uh, bad guys. And it's, it's clever. It's a different idea on uh, superpower. But the thing that caught me immediately offhand is one: Kaidan means stairs. So why are you <laughs> calling her stairs? Oh my! Uh, secondly, can she, can she get walked on? You have to climb on top of her. Maybe I don't know. Uh, the other thing he keeps one he uses the word yude, uh, but the problem is yude in Japanese is kind of like us saying us saying poltergeist. I mean, how often do you say poltergeist story? We don't. We say ghost story, right? Um, and of course, with the Japanese, they would say bakemono. They wouldn't. They just wouldn't use yude. It's rarely, rarely used. And like I said, it's kind of like us using poltergeist. It doesn't. It does mean. It does mean ghost. Yeah, but it's not. Um, it's a dic- It's someone who took a dictionary saying, "Okay, how do you say ghost in Japanese?" And they, uh, that's what happened. Instead of asking a Japanese person, you know, what you would think, Mark Wade, the mighty Mark Wade, when he wrote this, he'd be able to done pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this is what a uh, fake weeb next to a true weeb looks like true weeb chester knows the language i do i speak the language mm-hmm. yeah. uh, but he does the, you know he could have easily asked cb savalski right he has con- direct contact with him knows him well for the longest time cb yeah amongst cb the other savalski would have to put down his katana for a minute and answer to answer him yeah but you know what and, i mean uh, cb was their uh was their new talent hirer uh for a very mm-hmm. long time right and he's been there forever uh, you know, so I mean, Mark could easily went to talk to CB. CB does speak Japanese. I've heard him speak Japanese. He's pretty fair at it, actually. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, he he could have got him that answer super quick, right? A simple phone oh, call. Would CB would CB have a katana? Or would he be a, a true weeb and have a wakazashi? No, I would say he'd probably have a naginata because that's what women use. <gasps> Oh, no. oof, oof. <laughs> oh, that was so many forms of problematic. Uh, anyway, that's my offer. Not, not a looks cool. uh, and that's all. That's the only one I had for today because the only one I read this week that was worth really talking about. Um, go ahead. That's it, folks. End of the show. End See you show. next week. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah, this is our peak. <laughs> we're Shot out. Gun wedding, Denali. Tell us about this one. Top cow, by the way. Yep. So, shotgun wedding is about two assassins fighting each other. You have the main protagonist, which is the guy, and his jilted lover, which is the uh, woman with the shotgun. Basically, their top assassin, he left her at the altar, and she's seeking revenge. Um, this is a four-issue uh, storyline, so it's a quick and fast one that you guys can enjoy. You know, it's action-packed. It's two assassins killing, trying to kill each other and, you know, take their differences out through violence. Oh, okay. So there's no supernatural in this book at all? No. Okay, I'm not interested. <laughs> why Why would you think there's supernatural things in it? Because, man, it's a comic book. Well, well yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> but nah, I'm just kidding. I usually don't read real life stuff very much, but I, I've been introduced to a few that I actually were pretty good. So, um, now, how deep are you into this, Anel? Um, about two issues in of four, so halfway through the story. Then you're enjoying it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, not not everything has to be super intellectual, you know, super smart. Big and all brain. That stuff. 
big brain. No, sometimes you just have you just sometimes you just need some violence and some comedy and absolutely, you know. Mm-hmm. And this and I, isn't comedy, uh, haha. This is comedy. Oh, that's awkward comedy. But oh, I see. Yeah, no, I always enjoy when I can find a Top Cow book to read. I don't know what it is about Top Cow, but I just want them to succeed. It's I don't know what it is about them. Uh, maybe it's because of their name, but I don't know. Uh, so cool. I mean, they have the planet Earth, and it has udders. I mean, that's cool, man. I like that. Um, but uh, we do have good doll press in here. He said, hello, Booster, the wee bird. And he's saying, uh, er, hello, Patriots fan. Now, man, Ooh. you know I was just playing with you earlier, Uh-oh. dude. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, are you, you sure there I'm wasn't playing. a... Uh... Uh, I think there's a bit of a scrap going on behind the scenes. A little bit. Well, I was just playing with him. Be, I was being indig- indignant. Stop fighting. It's like watching dad hitting dad again. <laughs> anyway, uh, Asuka is not a Langley Soryu. Uh, Soryu is not happy with me at all. A Mark Wade book? Question, question, question. I do apologize. Sacrilege. Uh, good evening. Uh, Valen is here. Hail Nate Raven. Of course, Hail Raven. Very nice to see you, Valen. And, uh, and uh, Liam Gray says, where do I find the link to join? Dude, go to the Fit Fan Speak Facebook group. You are a member. And if you can't, uh, maybe Booster will uh, throw you a link. We love. We haven't talked to you in a long time, dude. We'd love to have you come I in. I don't want to give a link to the Aussie. Uh, stop being that <laughs> way now. Uh, fine. All right. Well, let's move on to the next page, though. So that's cool. So it's a straight up uh, revenge, uh, just you know, high high octane book. It's uh, just fun, nice. Right. Uh, now you now these other two are not that at all, and these are both from uh, Denelli as well. And I have read neither one. Well, I've read the original Edgar Allan Poe, The Conquering Worm. Uh, but um, yeah. Hmm. Tell us about these, dude. Okay. Just waiting for it to show up. All right. So this one is uh, oh, by did I not, did Richard. I not drop that over there. I do apologize. I'll come. No, you, you did. You always like this. <laughs> I know. I'm biased, dude. What can I say? Biased to the fan, but not for us. We know where your loyalty it. Um, yes, I'm anyways, loyal to the chat. So, <laughs> <laughs> we see that. Uh, so we got the first one. Um, I'll, I, <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe, The Conqueror Worm, um, which has been adapted by Richard uh, Corbin, who's both the artist and writer for this adaptation. It's, it's a horror book, as you can see from the front cover. Um, and it's basically, uh, if you ever read The Conqueror Worm, he adapts into a comic book form following The Traveler that the poem talks about mm-hmm. and seeing the sights of those sights in, in those uh, violent images so i found it pretty interesting since we're talking about worms and we're talking well since we're doing our own beyond the gate tales um, from me on the gate or, yes yeah well tales john malin beyond. is doing a piece uh, for tales from me on the gate and he is mm-hmm. doing the same thing edgar Allan pose the conqueror worm uh, which is really cool. He's already submitted to. By the way, guys, John Malin not only is a lot of fun on the streams, but he's actually a very efficient, hardworking guy, comic book guy. Just so you know. <laughs> so mean, it kind of picked. So it kind of picked my interest, and in, I was seeing how another person interpreted um, that uh, same piece because everybody has their own interpretation of different works. So that's why I was reading that one. Um, the next one is a, a novella from Alan Moore that was uh, adapted into the, the comic book, uh, the hip. Uh, one second, I'm gonna cough. He's coughing. While he's coughing, I will mention, of course, that the the uh, Conquering Worm from Richard Corbin is at Dark Horse Comics, and uh, the only I love the art, but I really hate the font though. The uh, the logo is uh, it's pretty terrible. I think it's supposed to inside that kind of sixties uh, what tales of you know tales of horror or tales or whatever kind of font. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from yeah, it anyway. It, it feels like more like a sixties or seventies uh, uh, you know kids cartoon logo, dude. It doesn't. I don't like I don't it at all. I remember much about the Conqueror Room uh, Worm. What was it about? I remember the poem having something to do with a theater and a bunch of angels dancing around and crying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Where was the worm me. again? 
What was he conquering? It's, it's a very short poem. You can go read it yourself, dude. Right. Yeah. And then the second offering is Alan's more the uh, hypothetical lizard, uh, which deals with a prostitute, which is in the main character, uh, the main cover, the one with the half mask. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she has a half mask because she had a uh, surgery which separated her left brain from her right side of her brain. Uh, so she can see and hear, but she can't speak um, and talk uh, because of that. Why would and she want to do that? I'm, I'm curious. Because she's a slave. And she, it was done to her because this oh. is uh, part of a fantasy setting. Um, I, have, I don't remember quite what fantasy setting. Um, but basically, she's a prostitute for wizards. And to keep her the secrets of the wizards... Um, they removed her ability to speak, and yeah. the unfortunate side effects and all that. She's not, it's a very, good, she's not a very good prostitute, though. She's mm -hmm. kind of ugly, <laughs> you know. Hey, that's well, not that part that needs to be pretty, Chester. Uh, yeah. Always me. Bags for that. Excuse me, the imagination needs to be satiated as well. Uh, but this art doesn't look good anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, I've actually heard about this book and. It seems to be well written, but I mean, it's Alan Moore, of course. Yeah. So I was reading more for Alan Moore than the sure. actually drawing. So I haven't read this. Um, have you, Booster? Nope. That took a long time to say no. All right. Um, Joshua Hughes is telling us that the fa the halftime show for the uh, Super Bowl was a waste of time. Isn't it always? I haven't seen a good halftime show in long decades, man. Uh, we are expecting sweet victory, not just a short uh, SpongeBob click, uh, uh, clip. Uh, 1.5 million, million people didn't sign a petition for this. Uh, I don't understand what you mean, but uh, I'm sure the news will be all about it. And if it was uh, SJW, the news will love it and everybody else will hate it. Uh, Eric M. Boy says, I agree. That font detracts from the cover art. Uh, psychedelic rock music album in a lettering. Yeah, no, there's, that's, that's another way it looks at it, right? Asuka says, the font letters should be spread out a little bit. Yeah, I, I just really don't. It doesn't sit at a ground pole to me. Um, but the art's awesome, though, so. And uh, Denali seemed to be enjoying the book. Uh, didn't get it, Booster. You sent it to Liam Gray. Huh? No worry. We've got it all figured out. We've all figured it all out. Right. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, unless you have anything else to say to say about that, we'll move on. We do have a lot of books today. So you have more comments on the uh, hypothetical lizard or the conquering worm, Denali? No, not at all. Just Sweet. check them out. It's more for the writing than mm -hmm. for the art. Yeah, which... Well, two great writers Onion. right there. For sure. All right. Now we get back into some stuff that I actually know about. Nice. Um, well, actually, before you know, let's not do that. Hold on. Let me let me come. Let, let me go over here first. Actually, let's uh, let's go talk about these two, and I'll come back to that later. Okay. Um, because oh uh, the first, well, no, because I want uh, Booster to get on in this now. Uh, so uh, Booster, you have you told me this is he now understand everybody. Booster told me to do this. I I was forced. I, I it was like guns involved. All right. Uh, I because, don't remember saying Blue Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't your choice. That is Booster's, uh, this is Denali's choice. But the one on the I right, see. the Heroes in Crisis, this is Booster's <laughs> choice. Okay? Understand Begrudgingly. Yes. All right. I, I have been reading Heroes in Crisis. I know that it's absolute uh, post-modernist gunk, and we're essentially going into the role of Tom King's therapist to read this while we're... Mm -hmm listening to him whinge and cry because that's what Tom King's writing has been lately. It's been a, uh, we've just been kind of going into his psych lately and just listening to him, uh, put all his problems onto his readers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm reading it because this is the first time booster gold and blue beetle have been together in Canon since 2006. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's, so for me, that's a pretty big deal. And here's, and the parts with those two are pretty fun, right? That's a pretty thin gold. excuse, you ask me. It's pretty thin. I know. I know it's crap. I know. But that's all I need, baby. That's all I need it's, uh, as a reason to read a comic is a promise that Booster Gold and Blue Beetle will be together. Well, or yeah. if Booster Gold is in a comic, I'm going to read it. All right, then. All right. Is he the bad yeah. guy? 
Have they established that? Oh, yet? We don't know. We do not know yet. They're still trying to figure out who's who went and killed people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Harley says it's Booster Gold. Booster Gold doesn't remember anything. Well, then he's guilty. Booster Gold is a bad guy, as he always was. He started out as a bad guy, you know. He's a thief from the you? future. How do you? He's a wholesome hero. <laughs> yeah, wholesome. That's a nice joke. Well, <laughs> I can't say I can give an opinion because I have not read a single Heroes in Crisis because as soon as it came out, people started screaming immediately. So I didn't want to waste my time. It, it raises yeah. an interesting moral dilemma, guys. It does. Like, if you're a go nowhere dead end janitor from the distant future mm-hmm. and you steal a super suit that allows you to do infinite good, even though you do it for the wrong reason. Are you a bad guy? Can yes. you out can you sort of outweigh Mr. Gold has can... saved the multiverse? Yeah, he has. He saved the universe multiple times. By so accident. Where... Come on, don't give him too much credit. He did it on <laughs> purpose, intentionally, sort of. He had to have skits and <laughs> he, he had to have put an ad for Hunter kind of push him in the right direction, but he did it, damn it. He did. Now by the way guys, as you can hear, Liam has joined us. How you doing Liam? I'm good, thanks, guys. How are you doing? It's I'm good to great, be here. Bloody I'm, Aussie. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to have you here because we have this New Zealander here. It's nice to have an Aussie to balance them out because you know. Yeah. And he keeps the now, 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 now. Since I have Liam here, I want to, I want to straighten something out here. Now, Booster tells us that uh, New Zealand has no marsupials. They don't have any can- kangaroos, wallabies, and wombats or anything like that. But I know. I know Booster has a whole yard full of wallabies and wombats. So tell us the truth. Is he lying? Nah, man. He, he's telling the truth. I had to clear them all out so I'd have more room for sheep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, then. There it is. It, you guys heard it here. He's got that right. We have a whole lot of bloody sheep. Do you, you get sheep in your town? Uh, not in the town, but uh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do. Well, as soon as you go out into the rural areas, they're they're everywhere. Well, I do enjoy me a bit of mutton, so. Mm-hmm. I like some lamb. Lamb's good too. Mm-hmm. What anyway. were we talking about again? I think we're talking about comics. We are talking about <laughs> talking comics. About I just wanted a little bit of part. clarification on a on a point. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, what do you think about this, Liam? Are you, have you read the Heroes in Crisis? Are you enjoying it? I haven't. I haven't. I've only read like the first issue. There's just something about the whole concept that I actually find really unattractive. Um, the idea that there's this place that all the heroes go where they are the most vulnerable um, to sort of work through their issues and that they would entertain for a second having Harley Quinn there Mm. is just so radical and far from what is feasible to me. Like the idea that Batman would allow himself or people in the Bat family to allow their psychological profiles to fall in the hands of anyone rather than handling it internally. The fact that they couldn't just have Martian Manhunter just go PSTD. Don't worry about that. Yeah. You're all fixed. You know, like, right. Like it just seems, (laughs) That sounds like, like something. That sounds like a big no-no for Martian Manhunter to screw with someone's yeah. psych to go. Be happy. No, well, just I mean, you, you, don't, don't be insane anymore. Don't be insane anymore. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to be traumatized. Here you go. There you go. Like true, true. Like it just. And they've got other psychics good, and other men. Good job, just, Liam. Good luck. Good job, Liam. Now you gave DC the new. <laughs> <laughs> Martian Manhunter's title. Oh, yeah. Martian Manhunter, the therapist okay. series. Diddly, diddly, D. <laughs> Lay on my couch. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but the, for me, the, the simple concept of Harley Quinn being a threat to anything is the nonsense for me. She is a nonsense TNA character. Why in the hell oh, is yeah. she a threat to anything? She in the second issue, movie. I believe she beat Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. It was such bull crap. Yeah, that that doesn't even matter. The reason that she is a threat is because that she was psychologically conditioned and made into the person that she is using, regardless of how free she claims to be, mm-hmm. by one of the most brilliant and maniacal supervillains in the entire universe. True. This who is true. She is who 
would be able to easily, easily manipulate her into willingly or otherwise divulging information which would make the heroes vulnerable. It is yep. absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, um, but I, and I'm just it, talking power it, level, it, but of course what you said is true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah said, well, I mean, that's the sense. thing. It's, it's, it's the trust issue. I mean, you're going to put people in a situation where they're vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to trust someone like Harley Quinn, who is like, whose whole shtick is she's Looney Tunes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like... Well, she's a Looney Tunes lesbian now. Just get make sure you get that right. As bisexual, <laughs> Chester, she likes men as well. And calling her a lesbian instead of bi is called um, bi erasure. It's very it problematic. Hey, it. Excuse me, I do believe they use they use pansexual now. Get it right, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just never care for these Harley Quinn. I mean, she's a sexy little character. I get it, but I mean, come on, it's just dumb, dude. Uh, but anyway, that's my opinion, and everyone yells at me when I say it, so I'm sure I'm getting yelled at right now. People throwing more potatoes at the screens, I'm sure. Uh, Hail no, Harley Quinn is. isn't uh, entirely liked. The main people who like uh, Harley Quinn are that your basic bitch, uh, nerd, fake comic girls who like to yeah. play D and D and go chaotic neutral because they're oh so random. <laughs> they're always chaotic yeah. neutral, dude. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, they're random. No, yeah, you spot on. The, the I'm like so random. The original incarnation of Harley Quinn, which has long since been dragged through the mud and basically lost, and was, if I'm not mistaken, recently retconned to be a, a separate character to the current Harley Quinn that we have. Um, she is an interesting character as the sidekick of the Joker in as an example of a misled teen youth led into a sort of predatory sexual position into a unhealthy relationship, because that's a struggle that I myself have seen with many young women growing up over the years. Sure. And so that's an interesting dynamic to play with and use. And the fact that they not only went in the opposite direction, but embraced it and tried to empower that rather than use it as a cautionary villainary, you know, like as a cautionary villainess was such a drastic misstep, but it makes money, mm -hmm. you know? Well, you know, I have to say myself, from personal experience, the best sex I ever had in my life was with a girl who was slightly unhinged. So there's some, probably something to that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, go, go unhinged, mm -hmm. you know, at least once. Mm. <laughs> there's, a time, there's, a time and a, there's a time and a place for it. Let's just say that. It's not running through the street with a mallet, okay? True. It's not the only to be a monster <laughs> Well, anyway, <laughs> I think we beat Heroes in Crisis to death with a mallet. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. it's pretty universally disliked. But Booster likes it. Just remember that, guys. Write that down. I, Tell everybody Booster I loves tolerate. Heroes in Crisis. He's the one holding it up. Okay? I just I just I, like I, the I, fact I, that I Booster just... Gold is in it. Okay. And Blue Beetle together as a team. As a team. I do want to say, though... Um, I am offering my criticism having only read the first couple of issues based on a few loose premises. Oh, dude, I haven't read it at all. Oh, it's crap somewhere. I haven't read so any, and I, I still don't, criticize I don't, it. I don't want to crap on something that might turn out to be great, and if someone else is enjoying it, power to them, because mm -hmm. I'm just basing it off my previous experience and knowledge of the DC universe. Oh, wow. And so the, diplomatic the of you, Liam. To... Um, it's very well, diplomatic. Like you know, it's very office. nice. So we don't me, need I just sure. say, you know, Booster, go to hell. You see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to deal with me. It is, it is, it is. But anyway, it's cool. No, of course, if you're liking it, yeah. cool, man. Uh, the art is beautiful. I know that. Um, Blue it's Beetle. Blue... It's just wasted on Tom King's neurosis. Yeah, well, he's going through a thing. But I, like I said, I really think it's Dan Didio. Uh, but that's a conversation yeah. for another day. We're talking about things we like, supposedly. Uh, Denali, Blue <laughs> Beetle, a character who I like very much, a character who was changed you know in a, in a, in the right way and now is some uh, latino boy i think his name's tony jaime 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 uh, but i i, I like what they did with I this think... character i like the new blue beetle man right mm. so i'm actually reading not the rebirth but the actual blue beetle from uh 52 so which is oh, from start... after the crisis yeah that's so... a great run i yeah. just yeah, like so, the so picture <laughs> So I just I'm just clarifying mm -hmm. because that's not the blue beetle that I gave you. Uh, okay. I was giving you the new fifty two post crisis blue beetle that I'm reading. That I, one. I, I like the I like the picture. Right. Wait, the new fifty two one? 
the one post post infinite crisis. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. One. Okay, all right, we're okay. Yeah. Although it is the same so, character as Jaime, so. <clears throat> right, it's him getting the power of the blue beetle and everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, it reminds me of Spider Man, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Latino Spider Man. Yeah, Which is why is. probably why sideways didn't work because they have the blue beetle already with that. Oh, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um but no, I've been enjoying it. Um I heard Booster talking about it, so I decided to check it out mm-hmm. and see, you know, for myself what it's all about. And so far I've been enjoying the first three issues uh of this run. What so. do you think of um what do you think of the blend between the science origins and the magic origins of the legacy of the Blue Beetle character? Mm, they um, swap it around very often. They do. They, they right. do. What, what's your opinion on that? How do you receive it? Um, I think I can't remember who exactly said it, but sufficiently uh, advanced magic becomes magic. So, That's or, yep. 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 Yes. Yeah, so basically, if if it's science, it's super advanced science that's it's already magic. If it's magic, it's science that is unexplained. All right. So that's how I see it. i got to tell you something a little amusing. So I'm pretty sure Keith, Keith Giffen was taking the piss with this, right? So in mm-hmm. that 2006 run of Blue Beetle, he had kind of this – it was kind of thought that uh, the Blue Beetle was of magical origin, right? And then we had this character on a motorcycle come along, and uh, he said, kid, that ain't magic. That is alien technology. And with this Rebirth run, it's also uh, written by Keith Giffen, What the, it was established that uh, it was a scientific of scientific origin, right? And then Keith Giffen had that same character come on in on a motorcycle, come along and just say, that ain't technology kid that's of magic origin so oh did he oh, that's funny <laughs> yeah yeah well, so that's, it's a, yeah, but <laughs> this the the suit that he has is, he talks to and the suit is right. most certainly alien technology and it's a world conquering uh uh technology that uh, yeah, jaime okay. is trying to keep in check right but i believe uh now with the rebirth it's of magic origin again and it's connected oh, to like doctor and such well, yeah what, with me, what happened with the Blue Beetle, uh, I read the original Blue, Blue Beetle a little bit. Um, and then they had this uh, animated TV show, maybe, or a movie. Maybe it was a movie. Uh, Young but, Justice. Uh, Young Justice. Young Ju- Young was Justice it Young Justice? Okay. Well, he's been all over the place. They did that well. They he's did. been in Young Justice, which was fantastic. And he has been in uh, Batman Brave and the Bull. No, I think and it was Young he was Justice. in animated films. Yeah. Um, but uh, what happened was my kids loved that show. So did I. Um, and we used to mm-hmm. watch that together all the time. And uh, uh, back in those days, uh, I actually would um, uh, get uh, Marvel Comics sent here to Japan because back in those days, shipping wasn't that bad. But, uh, you know, Japan has just uh, doubled down on its uh, uh, shipping costs over and over and over. And, of course, Trump coming in and making noise, they've doubled down again. So wonderful. Um but, there's, um, a special trade, there's a special trade deal between Australia and Japan mm-hmm. where we can ship to one another for free. It's one of the few things we can do. So you might have the ability to get your comics from Australia and save yourself a bunch on postage. But, I mean, now did you know Wow. Did you just so give just me a so secret? You know, that is mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I, that's how I make money selling Transformers on the wow. side. I get them from Japan. They get sent here for free. I save, like, 20 bucks on shipping. Then I can mm-hmm. knock price down lower than the stores and sell them wow you know, Liam comes world. bearing gifts i wonder if i have a friend that lives in australia yeah. hmm. <laughs> um but <laughs> <laughs> but but my point it being is uh we watched the kids they really liked it and at that time i was getting marvel comics for them and i started getting the blue beetle one and uh so i my kids have read a lot more than i have but uh i do have blue beetles around this house but yeah, the run you want to get is the 2006 one, uh, Post Infinite Crisis. That's a good, that's a very fun series. The Rebirth one, I think Keith Giffen has lost his edge a bit with his writing. Uh, Keith Giffen lately, he adds way too many characters into his stories, and he clearly wants to relive those Justice League International Glory days because he keeps throwing those characters in here yeah. and giving them absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. 
and sort of you know trying to focus on the character he should be developing on which is the main title character right Mm-hmm. He's one of those. He's one of those old school writers that have proven themselves and and deserve the creative freedom that they've earned. I believe. Um, like I think it needs to be edited a little bit. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But um, I think that he's. I think that he's very talented and has introduced a oh, lot of ideas into. That. I absolutely agree. I love um, Keith Gibbons' work. Yeah, I think that he's. I think he's very. He's a very talented individual, and. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, he's one of those guys that a lot of people don't sort of know, don't know what he's responsible for, don't know what he's done. Um, but he's Just Sleep International there. is one of my absolute favorite runs. Of course, yep, it's brilliant. Mm. He, him and JM are both. Yeah. Uh, you will yep. find him speaking more highly of another artist, or no, of another writer in this industry. They are both exceptional men. Oh, of course, cool. and JM Mattis was responsible for Craven's Last Hunt. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Coming off of a human comic like Justice League International, then writing something brilliant like Graven's Last Hunt, that's uh, exceptional. And, beautiful. And the, and, the two of those, and the two of those guys are buddies, and Booster and uh, Beetle bouncing off one another is, is those two guys. It's their friendship. <laughs> you see, that's now, awesome. I didn't even know that Booster and Beetle were friends until oh, you really? mentioned it. Yeah. They're like best friends in the whole world. Like They're, they're, like, they're like the old, they are the, the, the best, like, best friends that I can think of in comic books. They're like the... Absolutely. They're like a, they're like a team. They're like a well, duo. Yeah, the quintessential comic book yeah. friendship. Why do you think that's oh, the reason yeah. I'm reading Heroes in Crisis? Like I, I said, see. it's the first time Blue Beetle and Booster Gold have been together in canon since 2006, since he was killed off in uh, Countdown to Infinite Crisis. Mm-hmm. Well, just now, to let you know, Liam, I've actually thing. never read a Booster right. Gold comic, and I probably never will, so that's probably why. Well, you should definitely give a look at some of the old Justice League International dude, stuff. Dude, I'm just they, picking. Um, I'm picking at Booster. I'm oh, picking. He's you know, trying try to be mean to me, but he can't trigger um, me. I'm, now, um, I'm interestingly, sure. interestingly, Booster, I sort of knew that uh, Heroes in Crisis was coming for uh, for a while. I didn't know that it's what it would be, but uh, JM was putting um, was I don't know if you saw, but in Justice League 3001, um, he got yeah, together and they introduced uh booster and beetle back together for the first time in forever and it was just yeah, I did. Chemistry. when i when i, I read it I, I, when i read it i said to him i was like man this is gonna make you money like do something with this get this character spinning off because this is this is just mm. real this is like grade a comic writing mm. and yeah. he only got to do like two issues with them and then dc editorial came in and said we're doing something with booster and beetle it's time yeah. related. We can't let you use them anymore. And he had to drop them from the book. And it was yeah. I was really, wondering where they went because the issue they came in was brilliant. Yeah. Really well, Perth, Perth Comics over here says another Australian, by the way, uh, says uh, looks like Doctor Fate is playing second fill to the Blue Beetle cover. Well, Doctor Fate is kind of a plot device, isn't he? I mean, you're talking about uh, Uber Power, yeah. right? Um, I mean, he is like literally a, a entity of the universe, so. I think he's yeah. kind of often a support character in many things. Uh, but um, anyway, <laughs> unless Denali wants to say something more, we're going to move on to the next one because uh, we got we got to get to him. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Moving on. Moving on. Move, well, there you go. Moving on, guys. Uh, which which direction? Get outside. Um, let's uh, let's go this direction here, and let's talk about these two. Now, uh, one of these I know very well. I love the original uh, Elric run and stuff, and I love some of the things that Fresh Companies have done. But this Rashomon, I know nothing about, Denali. So why don't you start with that? Rashomon. Right. <laughs> so Rashomon, written and drawn by Victor Santos, a commissioner, Higago uh, Ko- Kobayashi um, case. So it follows uh, the commissioner as he's doing one of the cases. Uh, I won't really spoil anything. You guys can read it if you're interested, but it deals with, uh, it kind of struck me because I kind of like the Rashomon um, series and detective stories, especially the wandering samurais who, uh, magistrates who kind of bring order and peace to the village or town where they're at. Um, and that's why I kind of picked it up. And the art style is I enjoy the art style. It has that Asian flavor to it um, mm-hmm. because it's set in Asia, in Japan. 
Um, and I like the story and the mystery kind of involved with it. It's a whole book volume, so it's not single issues. So mm-hmm. you can go to Amazon, pick it up, and whatever. You'll get the whole thing in one book. Your art? Does the interior art look like a cover? Yeah. Or Because that's quite good. I mean, it, look, it reminds me a little bit of Batman the Animated Series. Right. So, yeah. So the cover, the interior arts is all drawn by the same person and written by the same person. So it's a fantastic read. I, I truly enjoyed the book. Mm. And then the other one, uh, any qu- other questions for Rashomon? Uh, no, <clears throat> although Rashomon itself is uh, uh, used as an example of uh, multiple point of views of the same perspective. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me. And uh, it uh, also is one of those interesting words that um, uh, isn't a word at all. It's a name. Right. That is interesting. Is it a self-contained issue? Is it an ongoing series? Um, it's a... Yeah, it's a self-contained issue. Well, it's a self-contained volume. So it's a full trade pack. I think six issues worth. Um, So you can read... I think there's other stories, but this is self-contained for this particular one. Cool. That's not connected. You'd recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Read it. You know, if you're interested, there's other books there, but it's not connected to any of the other (laughs) storylines. Totally Mm self-contained. Of course, there is a real big problem you do realize with his art on here. Even though it's obviously supposed to be a samurai, everything else around him is Chinese. Right. That's why I say... That's why I I said Asian flavor. (laughs) um, At an ignorant heathen, man. Tell me why you know that. Why? Well, first of all, he's yeah. got a pipe in his hand that's not Japanese, that's Chinese. That uh, that uh, building in the back is a Chinese design, uh, not Japanese. Uh, the uh, tree and the plants are of Chinese artistic design, not Japanese. Right. If it's going to be uh, Japanese, it would be more like cherry blossoms mm-hmm. um, in that regards. Um, the structure of the Japanese, as uh, Chester mentioned, is quite different if you compare them you would see night and day but western people don't know that and every time you see anything that's supposed to be japanese it always looks chinese i don't know what that is but it is what it is right on the other hand we have elric who is awesome and this is the yeah elric (laughs) <laughs> and this is the old stuff by this is Roy Tom uh, yeah. Thomas by the way um, this is the yeah. old stuff the really colorful stuff they actually is a, a French company took and redid a lot of these stories in a in an absolutely epic art style uh, it's the same things they just kind of retold the, the the tales of Elric uh, so if you're interested in Elric at all this series is really cool uh, but uh, there is another series that has been done in the past ooh, I don't know 10 years less maybe uh from a french company which is eluding me right now but uh oh man elric is so awesome dude elric or man like yeah, this is from back, back when more uh from when yeah he's more cop right yeah it's yeah more cop was was still doing the like the indie like circuit scene like mm-hmm. he would go to cons and stuff and he so you've got this big author going around talking to like fans and just small little groups of like a few thousand people it's like, Real part of hit comic book history there. Just amazing. Oh, it is. Well, Moorcock is a really cool dude. He's very involved. Uh, he He's, uh, he's, he's a, a person who a lot of people in comics don't know his name, and you should, right? Tell, um, tell me his name. Tell me his name, Chester. Michael Moorcock. Michael Moore. Moorcock, man. How Cock. bad is his name? You are the booster boy. You are ultra hetero, hetero and oiled. Moorcock is for you. Um, so... <laughs> Just so you know, uh, like go the, to your go to your local comic store and say, "Please, I need it. Give me more, more cock." cock more. Yes, uh, but uh, the, the the other day, uh, Denali, we were, one of our news pieces was talking about that uh, France is in a golden age of comic books right now, which is absolutely right. cool, and uh, they are. And uh, one of the biggest, most popular ca- comic book characters in France is Elric. Actually, they love Elric; they can't get enough of him. Uh, so this is. I wouldn't awesome be surprised. Book. The albino lost prince 
with mm -hmm. the sword, oh, yeah. sword bringer yeah. that yeah. devours souls. Yeah. yeah. Classic, classic barbarian with this awesome sort of mythic element that you didn't get from the initial Conan sort of universe and these this disparate law versus chaos struggle in the story. Mm -hmm. It just 10 out of 10. And he's a, he's a king on hiatus, <laughs> hiatus as well. Uh, but the, yeah. you guys might think this is my book, the way I introduce it and everything, but it's not. This is Denali's <laughs> suggestion. Sorry, Denali. Go yeah. ahead, dude. No, no, no. You already said everything I was going to say. Sorry. <clears throat> but Sorry. I was introduced by Michael uh, Moorcock by the internal champion. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. then and then I followed up with the Tales of the White Wolf, which is Elric. Mm. And that's a fantastic book as well. Yeah. You know, I heard rumors a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, that there is a company. Uh, uh, well, it's a, it's a newer company that's made up of a lot of people who are involved in like uh, the creation of EverQuest and a whole bunch of those other MMOs. Those kind of classic, uh, uh, you know, legendary MMOs are actually yeah. there. It, there is a secret, supposed secret project that is going on that is creating an Elric MMO. Yeah, that's been for years. I know. Yeah, but those um, and sure and work. that and that's a huge cost. An MMO costs a lot, yeah, a do. lot of money. So if you if we don't hear anything soon in the next two years, then we gotta assume that project is dead. <laughs> Not to mention um, MMOs tend to bomb. Well, it, um, is Markov still alive? Is he still yeah, about? Is he still I think writing so. books? I no, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, yeah, he's. Um, more cocks still roams these streets. No, I'm pretty sure he is. Now, I understand yeah. this yeah. adaptation here is from Roy Thomas, uh, who's another legend we don't talk about enough. Right. And I was, and I was reading his um, Conan the uh, Barbarian book that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Mm, and it yeah. was a Sumerian run. Sure, yeah. He also did what the, uh, was it The Outsiders? Uh, with uh, Union Jack and uh, it's the Outsiders, right? I believe so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's made a lot of care. Roy, Roy, we should we should talk about Roy Thomas more. Everyone wants to talk about Chris, Chris Claremont and Stan Lee and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And those people are all ultimately worthy of being talked about. But we should take some time to talk more about Roy Thomas. I mean, he's uh, I mean, he's given I mean, us so much. Yeah, he created the Man Thing. He mm -hmm. given us the vision. Mm -hmm. He wrote the he wrote the Cree Skull <laughs> Scrawl War. That was from him. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Wolverine, he created Wolverine, Ultron, Captain Marvel, Morbius, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Ghost Rider. He he had a part in creating them all. Yeah. No, he's important, yeah. dude. Absolutely. I got Kay Blon in here. It says 14. I don't know what that means. I do have to apologize to Kay Blon, though. I was trying to help him out with something, but uh, this weekend I was moving my daughter, and uh, it was just I got too crazy busy to get, get it done on time, dude. I apologize, man. Uh, if you still uh, need me to look at it, which I, I would assume you don't now, uh, but if you still need me to look at it, just let me know. Uh, but I do apologize for that, dude. What's he counting? He's, he's just saying numbers. What is yeah. happening? <laughs> Well, it Makes doesn't me matter. I, mean, I like it. Anyway, <laughs> um, anything else further on Elric or uh, Rashomon? Will I move on to the next one? I, I do just want to say that I think that, like Roy Thomas, there, there is a generation of, of authors there that were very much overshadowed by the rise of huge art legends like McFarlane and stuff that came up just at the beginning of the 90s where they, and the late 80s where they sort of blew up. And so the writers really got sort of pushed out and eclipsed. But this is from a point where you had guys writing whole series. They weren't just doing like four to 12 issue runs. They were doing ongoing and putting in a lot of work. Yeah, so sure. there's like a whole decade of art. Well, like, well, a generation of, of artists that proved themselves, sort of came through, did the work and have largely been forgotten. And it's a real shame because you'll, you'll often find that you go back and you look at some of these most influential stories and stuff that's being called back on today or relationships and things that have been built upon in current continuity. And you don't realize how much of the origins that they have in these guys that mm -hmm. were not celebrity writers. And, um, and it's a shame because it's, 
they've done a lot of good for the for the industry as a whole. Yeah, and, right. and a lot of these guys are building on people even earlier than that, like, say, Plug, who is, of course, a, a great artist. I love his detail and uh, especially military stuff. But he's also the guy who did, you know, uh, uh, a lot of writing as well and creation of new characters like Rock and, uh, you know, Sergeant Rock and all that kind of stuff. It, they're building on that guy, yeah. those kind of guys, too. No one talks about Plug anymore, right? Yeah. And I grew up yeah. on his stuff, man. He was awesome. Uh, Eric Boyd says All Star Squadron by Roy Thomas is a personal fave. Yeah, it is yeah. good, dude. I, I like Roy well, everything he does, actually. And here's the thing he also wrote for one of the uh, number 54 of Blue Beetle, the original run for the first Blue Beetle. Mm. So, oh, yeah. God, Ben Garris. <laughs> oh, so, so, yeah, so you, so you have tides with him. Um, and he's written a lot throughout the years. He's just. He's a draft horse. Unfortunately, he never got into one of those franchises that blew up like the X Men. That's why we know Chris Claymore. That's what we know. You know True. all these famous writers because those um, franchises blew up amazingly, and everybody wanted to know who are these writers. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. Roy Thomas and some of the others that you mentioned <laughs> weren't on those titles, unless you're a big comic book <laughs> nerd like us. That's true. Who yeah. follow? follow yeah. Up. Follow, and that's the real shame of it. But that's our culture, brother. That's us, yeah. you know. And that, yeah, that's it what. Is. Yeah, that's what you're not going to yeah. get on a big on a big Hollywood movie, you know. Well, it's true. That's right. like Chuck Dixon, right? I mean, he's really fam- He's a good writer, but he's also famous because he created Bane, and it's a character that blew up, right? I mean, it's a good example. Mm-hmm. But Roy Thomas is is a f- absolute work workhorse, man. Right. Yeah. And Bane blew up because he did something impossible. He broke Batman's back which you wouldn't imagine that ever happening, you know? Mm. Oh yeah. Boy wonder will get blown up the every other day and he'll just replace it. But Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Being crippled for like a while. It's also the pathos of broken back. See, like if you were to say to someone, Oh, uh, penguin defeated Batman. You think, Oh yeah. He defeated Batman. It's not a big deal. You say, Oh, penguin shot Batman. You think, Oh, that's a bit more heavy. That's a little heavier. And then you turn around, you're like, oh, well, uh, Bane broke Batman's back. I think, oh, that's like a, that's like worse than killing him because that's like a lasting, debilitating injury. Yeah. And it speaks to a really primal part of your brain. Um, it's a powerful narrative tool that, that it's similar to, it's similar to how stabbing someone in a fight, like might not appear as impressive as grabbing someone's shoulder and just breaking their arm. You see one, the other Whereas being stabbed is every bit as lethal, maybe more lethal, but it's not as visceral. It's not as it doesn't speak to the. I'm being I'm being a, a pretentious overthinker. That's okay. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> we get you. Dude. Um, but yeah. uh, I do have two more up here. These are from Booster today. These are oh, his both offers. My ones. Yeah. <clears throat> These are both yours. Uh, we'll get to mm-hmm. the Daredevil one because I think that's a unanimous agreement there. Uh, but this other one here on the other side, this Shazam. Oh, first of all, DC, you are stupid. He is Captain Marvel. Stop it. <laughs> it's not their fault. Well, it's not their fault. Not I'll actually the man without fear I was talking about. Oh really? I I do love that one though, but the Man Without Fear I've been reading was a uh, weekly series that had just recently been coming out. Oh, I'm, I do apologize. It was I went, a lead up to one, you know. I just figured I'd go oh, with a good one. You know. Oh my apologies! <laughs> <laughs> but that is an excellent read though. It is. Yeah. Uh, this Man Without Fear is by. Let me just check real quick. Frank Ch- Miller. Isn't that uh, you're thinking of uh, Chip? Uh, Jed, Jed McKay. So this is a uh, lead up to Chip Sadowski's takeover of Daredevil. Mm. Oh, okay. And the other one, and I'm not reading uh, the new 52 <laughs> Shazam, <laughs> reading this uh, new 2018 one also by uh, Jeff Johns. And the artist, I can't remember his name, but he did work with uh, Secret Six. So I, and his artwork for the Shazam has been absolutely spectacular. Yeah, but it's uh, still Jeff Johns. Mm-hmm. What's I wrong like with Jeff Johns? Oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> but this has been a really fun series, though. I think it's one of the uh, few kid-friendly books I can think of at the moment. I don't know if that might change at any point, though. But it is—it is quite wholesome. It is just about a, a gang of kids who all that you know, or they all get the power of Shazam. That might turn off some people, but I think it's kind of fun having a uh, group of kids with these powers. 
is well, it the uh, Captain Marvel family, or are they? Yeah, no, or that's they just normal, like, dude. They did that uh, originally. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, th- I do believe it's the Marvel family, but I think it's a different uh, group of orphanids. You know, they're kind of like the Burger King's club of diversity, right? You know, you got like that's the one kid, the little black girl, the, the big black kid. And, uh, so, so and he's the Whopper. Did you call them, did you call them orphanids? <laughs> did I miss you? I, 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 I said I orphan kids. kids. Orphan kids. Oh, orphan <laughs> kids. <laughs> the orphanids. That sounds yeah, exactly. bad. Right, no, that's, that's trademark that. That's a new. Okay, yeah. I uh, let's trademark hey, that Liam, right that's now. All yours, the that's all yours if you want it, uh, Liam. That's all yours. I got yeah. that to you for yeah. free. I'm generous. I will use that. I will use that. Orphan's a powerful word. Orphan it sounds badass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the orphanids but, are here. So what you're saying is the new uh, uh, Marvel family uh, is mm-hmm. you know they're all uh, just uh, making sure they have one of every color. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wonderful. You know, as as they tend to do, but uh, we still got Mary Marvel here, which I believe they had to change her name as well. She's still Mary, but they don't call her Mary Marvel. Mm. Yeah, it's dumb. I don't know why they gave that up. This is Captain Marvel. This is the it's... original Captain Marvel. The, the Marvel Captain, Captain Marvel has nothing to do with the original Captain Marvel at all. Mm-hmm. It's because lost... Marvel, Marvel got the name. Marvel got the name. They let the they let the um, name slip. I think it was for something ridiculous, like six hours. They didn't have the copyright for something ridiculous, like six hours. That's hilarious. And Marvel and Marvel somehow through through magic found out and snavelled it. And oh, so that is dirty. So when they went to relaunch, because uh, this is something they've been fighting over for years. Mm. Um, and so when they went to relaunch with the new Fifty Two, he was Shazam. <laughs> yeah, it's still stupid because Shazam yeah, is. is the it's name stupid. of the wizard. It's stupid. it's stupid and it's dirty, and and I and it's one of those things. Like when I was told, I was like, "That's so." That's oh, I won't swear. Yeah. That's so what does so he? Stupid. What does he do now when they come up and say, "Hey, who are you? I am Shazam." <laughs> oh, damn it! Yeah. Well, now it depends on the context of how he says it, which is dumb because it used to it's never, dumb. never matter like context. If he said Shazam, he was transforming. Yep. Didn't matter. Yep. And it was a secret word, so you'd have to, like, sometimes you'd have to, like, say it quiet, you know, and if someone, like, made him say it again, he'd be accidentally tricked and turned back. And they lose all of those as, as storytelling element, like, as storytelling tools by doing yeah. what they've done with context, and it is such a pity because yeah. this is one of my favourite characters in all comic book history. Oh, yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> well, I absolutely <laughs> love the Now, I this... absolutely love him character. Vailnid says something here that I need a little help with. J.R. Jr. is one of my fave Romitas. Romita, so... John, uh, John Romita Jr. Yeah. Yeah, but who is... Oh, I, I get it. John oh, I get Romita it. Okay, I, I, I was being dumb. Alright, cool. Okay. Oh, let's see. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just, just having a moment. Yeah, yeah no, that's alright. I have them every now and then. It's one of those senior things. Um... <clears throat> DC deserves it because they bankrupt, bankrupted Fawcett, which was much dirtier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. yeah, I believe they claimed that uh, Captain Marvel was a ripoff of uh, Superman. Oh, Superman. Yeah, and they, they just they kept did. him in court until they sank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, brutal. Didn't shiz- wasn't Captain Marvel the first character out of the two to have the power to fly though, and Superman ripped that off? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do mm. you realize how That's deep a- we are in nerdum? We we are such oh, nerds. Oh yeah. Oh but yeah, we gotta <laughs> state the facts. You know, you're right. Forgotten. It's just funny because oh, if someone just kind of randomly it. wandered into the stream, they were like, "What the hell? Are these bunch of nerds doing?" <laughs> they might learn something. They're not going to learn it by a bunch of people sitting around a panel talking about how great the new Star Wars movie is. No, that's with true. just just repeating the thoughts that someone else has paid them to say. Yeah, you mm. know, like how many people in the chat knew that Captain Marvel flew before Superman did? It's mm, like 20 sure. of you guys. Just yes or no. Did you know? Did you learn something cool that you can tell your friends? Probably I'll be like, yes, everyone knows that. Get to the point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the point is that uh, with the, what Booster is doing today, as you can see, he's bit lost his mind a little bit. He's choosing titles that uh, everyone else thinks sucks, but he wants to be a, uh, a uh, rebel <laughs> and be the bad boy, I think. Well, I thought Shazam was a fun book. I don't understand why everyone thinks it sucks, but that's fine. 
Yeah. And, and course, I thought Man of the Fair is excellent as well. Well, yeah, the Frank Miller one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is, that is excellent. But I quite <laughs> like this weekly series. Sue me. Oh, okay. Uh, Valen says, just say Kimota instead of Shazam. Hmm? That would be interesting. Kimota? Kimota sama? Oh, goodness. I do apologize. <laughs> everybody. Right. Let's go to our last set here. Um, now, this one, I actually am going to shut up and I'm going to let Booster explain because the one here, the Here Comes Daredevil, we're talking about uh, Stan Lee's run, of course. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it as a kid. I read these things as a kid. Uh, but uh, Booster is saying he's having a hard time getting through it because it's like old fashioned and wholesome and he wants things that depress him and want and make his dick fall off. But, you know, hey. <laughs> How how very dare you, because Spider-Man Blue was also very wholesome, and I loved that to bits. All right, well, fine. Well, speaking of dicks falling off, get into Spider-Man Blue. <clears throat> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> so Spider-Man Blue is a uh, little series by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, and I believe it was one of the first out of their little color titles that they were doing together in a co collaboration for their Marvel books and what spider-man blue is is a uh, peter parker kind of talking into a little recorder talking to himself or in a way speaking to gwen stacy right about their time together involving him gwen stacy and mary jane right their relationships together and how he's a bit of a player really and both these ladies really wanted him but while they he's discussing this you know he's also going over his memories of about people like aunt may flash and even uh norman which which norman am i thinking of harry norman huh Osborne. Osborne, rather. Osborne. yeah my bad and uh it, it's a great little story it's a story that kind of wraps up the silver age parts of spider-man and it kind of modernizes a bit of, for a time i guess right it is a really timeless story though made in the early 2000s and yeah, I liked it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, right. Model 3... It's, it's seems, a good, wholesome story. Oh, there you go. And Model 3 seems to have an opinion. He says, looks like Booster Roy read it. Ha <laughs> ha. Rim shot. I don't get it. The dick falling off thing. Oh, because I have no penis. Yes, that, that, that's... that's I see. Well, oh. I'll have you know, Model, I have a perfectly well-functioning penis, and I use it regularly. <laughs> He does, <laughs> even though he's technically alone and it is undersized. But hey, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, hey, I still get his work, baby. It does, it does, <laughs> it does. That's right. <laughs> anyway, I do apologize, enough, Liam. This is an inside joke. About, enough about talking about my penis <laughs> and how disappointing and funny it is. With, I always, yeah, I have been re reading. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Chester has a un. Uh, I don't know, a fascination of your penis, Booster. I, do. I don't know why. I, I, it does. We, it's strange. I but keep, we need to move on. I keep files. Oh, now, now, model <laughs> wants to, <laughs> now model wants to see it. All right, does, fine. I'll send you the afterwards. Uh, uh, let's see. Vanley anyway. When Stacy was in it, so I loved it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I actually yeah. haven't read the Spider-Man Blue. Blue Spider-Man Blue is great. It's, it's really a story about Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy's relationship. Well, it kind of confused me because there's like these X-Men comics that have color titles on them, and I and they were pretty horrible. So, yeah. you know. we we don't trust those ones. No, we go Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's color stories, including Daredevil Yellow, which is a another beautiful wholesome story. Yeah. Then we have Hulk Gray and Captain America White. Have you read but, Hulk Gray? I haven't yet. I haven't. Have you read um? Have you read like Cap White? No, not yet. Well, <laughs> but I've read Spider-Man probably... Blue and. That is probably the most interesting of, of the set. Um, yeah. The, because they go back and they tell this classic, classic style um, cap story. And they, they use the old art style. And it's just, you should mm -hmm. give it a read to get the time. It's one of those things that I, when I was finished reading it, I thought like, oh, wow. I, okay. You know, just this is, this is interesting. I, um, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it to just anyone, but if you like blue, then you'll you'll like cap white. These are these are great stories. Well, <clears throat> it seems that Willie Reed here he says he uses his to pee. He found another use for his twenty uh, sixth <laughs> appendage. Is that where it's supposed to come out from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, moving on. Here comes Daredevil, the man without fear. Now, Danelli, these right. are the old stuff. Did you read any of this? Yeah, I was glad that they moved from the yellow red to the red. <laughs> it just mm-hmm. looked awful. No, no, the new costume <laughs> is a lot better. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I got a Daredevil mm-hmm. Epic Collection for a dollar on Comixology. Wow. So, yeah, that's one benefit to digital, boys. Real cheap comics. And so I've just been kind of flicking through that on my iPad uh, every night, every now and then. And, yeah, I have said that I found it to be a bit of a chore, you know, because you got it's got a lot of dialogue with these Silver Age comics, right? And this mm-hmm. dialogue is just kind of explaining what we're seeing on the screen. And uh, it's very strange. It's very dated language. But, you know, it's fun. It, it's good fun. It's silly. It's classic comic book imagine silly, it, right? Imagine it in Stan Lee's voice and, like, he's narrating an old uh, radio show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fun. It could be it'll very make, fun. It'll make, it'll make it ten times more fun for you because that's what they were. You know, that's what mm-hmm. that's what they were. They were visual sure, radio sure. dramas. Hmm. I never thought of it that way. All right, I'll give I'll give that a go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always read things with voices in my head. I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. That's uh that's something you should be telling your doctor, not us. He's okay, He's okay so long as they don't start telling him to kill. That's true. Yeah. That's true. They they don't mention that or, very uh, often. So, okay, go find Booster's penis. <laughs> <laughs> so long as uh, so long as so long as Doomsday, oh, so long as Doomsday, so long as Darkseid isn't telling you to wear the skin of other people, you're okay. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I actually did pick up a couple of comics uh, yesterday. I picked up a a, a trade of uh, the uh, what what is it called? Let me check in here. Batman White Knight uh, Ooh, in yes. uh, Fukuoka yesterday. I spent $50 on that, just so you guys know. Ooh. Uh, but, uh, is, it just, is it just the book, or do you have trade. stuff at the back? Like, I haven't have, even like opened it. It's still in the plastic, dude. I haven't even opened it Yeah. Did you get Black Label one, Chester? No. Huh? All right. So, so Chester, just return it, and then just buy that book from Australia much cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to yeah, that's a little harder to do seconds. than that. I need to just pop off for five seconds because my computer's about well, to die, but I'll still be I think, here. I'll just, I'll I think right we're back. about to wrap up, aren't we? We are. We are. Yeah. So, uh, does anybody in the chat or anybody here have any other comics on what they're reading or uh, any color uh, mentions they'd like to uh, look at? Mm-hmm. So that's uh, like a no? No, I think that's it. Yeah, they're done with us. They're not interested in us. Yeah. But hey, 21 people watching. That's good for a uh, super competing with Super Bowl, huh? I'd say How so, dude. Up? No, mm-hmm. the, the one I have has the... Um, it's got Batman's head at the top with his cape stretched out, and it's got like this uh, room down below it. And uh, Batman's in red and White Knight's in white. So it's like a black cover. So it is black label. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's a it's a black label. Yeah, that's the trade. Yep. Batman White Knight. Yep. There you go. I have cool. that. I have that one. No, I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to reading it. Uh, so you know, I was glad I could be at least do that because I, I don't get up to the city, the northern city, very often. But they actually do have uh, Western Comics uh, shops there. So, uh, but anyway, guys, <clears throat> let me come over here and uh, uh, take this off and uh, come back over and just. Uh, to us in the uh, hangouts here real quick. All righty. All right. Well, uh, that was a lot of fun. We do appreciate you guys coming here. And uh, I enjoy just sitting talking about comics. We don't do that enough, Denali. Um, it's no, uh, we don't. no, we don't. It's just fun. I mean, it's especially all the knowledge we have to share. And I know there's a bunch of people sitting in the chat with uh, uh, all kinds of knowledge too, man. We'd love for you guys to come over here and chat with us and share it. You know, uh, just sitting here goofing off and uh, jawing about uh, comic books is a lot of fun, right? Um, Absolutely, so I, right. Yeah, it's 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 really good. I think this week I'm going to try to read some of those uh, books that uh, t- the European books that Todd suge- suggested. Uh, I'm going to try that this week because I've been I haven't been having a lot of my luck, man. I've been trying to read new stuff, but it's just oh god, it's god awful bad, uh, and it's just really bad writing. I don't know what's happened to the writers. 
I mean, the art is, you know, easy to see if you like it or not. But uh, the writers, man, where have they all gone? I don't get it. Um, all the good one has left, <laughs> unfortunately, or was forced to retirement, or they're mm-hmm. now moving on to novels or their own publishing productions. Yeah. So a lot of the a lot of the classic writers have been relegated to irrelevancy because they're seen as old men, and so their voice is less important to the company. Um, also, a lot of writers have um, a lot of writers ha- are currently employed because they are using Marvel and DC as a stepping stone into film, and they're not there to create comic books. They're trained in screenwriting, which for as as useful a skill it is, it is not it is not comic writing. Um, many of them are not familiar with characters they are writing, and they just see them from what they've seen in lace, in the latest media. They don't know their personalities all that well. They don't know the characters' voices, and so they just write them as if they were tools to fit into whatever plot they're trying to rush out, rather than the characters as they would act based on their legacy and their personality. Um, which is it is an overwhelming problem in the it industry, is. and it they is don't do research at all, dude. No research, zero research. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why the only way we're going to have the comic book industry to succeed and to revitalize and to have a golden age, we have to move away from character-driven storyline to creator-driven yeah. storyline, yeah. where we follow the creators and their work instead of the characters, because. Mm-hmm. Or else we're going to continue having that the cycle that's broken. That's why yeah. France is having a renaissance because they follow the creators and yeah. their work instead of the and characters. They're innovating, they're innovating new ideas and breaking new grounds, and without the restraints placed on them, um, restraints which which need to be made, unfortunately, because without them, then franchises or properties would be tanked completely. But um, but without those restraints, with the with the innovation that they are having over in France, it means that they are creating new properties, new legacies, um, new things that have a future. It's the same as what we're doing here in Comicsgate. Yep. We are creating books that have a future. Um, we're creating books that will will endure, and we won't have to worry about having our writers or our creative teams taken off the books because they'll go until we're done making them. Man, I can't. Until people- I can't wait until we get some of these uh, big titles start dropping in the next few months from uh, Comicsgate stuff. It's going to be really cool to see what uh, what we're getting, you know. Um, and it better uh, be good. It well, it better be, yeah. Well, I mean, seriously, it has to, it has to be good. But I'm looking forward to it. And for one, the one I'm really waiting for is T T Bird and Throttle. Uh, but I want to see yeah. Red Rooster, and I want to see Lone Star, and I want to see Cyber Frog, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to see all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm really excited. So cool. This is this is the future. This is this is very much um, this is very much the the pine the like the wild west. We're pioneering the creative industry. We're fronting everyone that's in the chat, all you guys, everyone in Commonscape, you guys here in 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 this video. Um, we're all going to be part of something, and yeah. it's going to be just absolutely fantastic. I mean, we we are, um, and it's going to be it's just uh, it's so exciting. This is history in the making. It's so exciting. It is, man. And, and with Denali and I, we're both involved in the Tales from Beyond the Gate project. And uh, that project right there. Um, yeah, so is Booster. Oh, yeah, so is Booster <laughs> in, in a way. He's a stretch goal, guys. Booster's a stretch goal. He's become yep. embodied and forever legend as a stretch goal, which we'll never reach. I will. We'll never It'll reach be it. my uh, greatest achievement. It's like the hundred and fifty thousand dollars stretch goal. We'll never reach it, dude. I'm sorry. Dude. I thought it was the two thousand one. No, 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 definitely not. No, I thought definitely. it was just a uh, option that people are not for to uh, get a variant cover from. Or well, maybe it's just something they can, you know, they can go to my Twitter, you know, at Booster Kiwi, and just message me and say, "Hey, I want a variant cover, and I'll just draw you one." Yeah, no, 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 definitely not. I'll pay you. I'm, I'm desperate. I want attention. <laughs> I'll pay you. <laughs> uh, but now that project is cool because you know I'm privy to all the stories and everything that's coming out, right? Uh, so I was like, oh man, there's some really cool stuff. You guys gotta love it, and this is just killer art, man. Uh, it, it, oh boy, 
boy, boy, boy, boy, boy. Um, really looking forward to that. Of course, that's coming up on Valentine's Day that is launching, and uh, ooh, that's exciting. But um, there are so many other cool projects coming this year, too. Uh, we, we have some uh, uh, some little hints and rumors that are starting to pop up about things that are coming. Of course, uh, still a lot of excitement about um, Rainbow Brute. Um, but uh, of course, we all want to see Cyberfrog first. But uh, eh, we could go on forever. We don't want to. We're way sure. past our time as it is. So, what we're going <laughs> to do, as usual, is say thank you very much. Say thank you, Booster. Oh, okay. Thank you, Booster. There you go. Say thank you, Liam. Thank you. And then we're going to let Denali take it out. All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for not going to the Super Bowl even though most of you guys probably don't like the Super Bowl. Um, but join us tomorrow for Comics News Today, where we talk about the news from the sites are laying off people. We'll see who will start laying off next. Mm. Uh, but as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. Namaste. Later, guys. Aloha. <laughs>